Greetings Sweden. We're really disappointed we can't be with you. I'm Ted Green of the Ancient Tree Forum in the UK and I'm actually saying greetings to you from inside a thousand year old oak. And I know you can hear the jets going over and the cars passing by because let's face it, in the UK pretty well every old tree is an urban tree. I'm really pleased to think that Sweden is having yet another oak conference. I use the phrase that science doesn't stand still and I think that's certainly true in the tree world in tree care and arboriculture. And let's face it, we are 12 years into the 21st century and progress has been made in what we think about our old trees. And at Windsor, we've got so many examples where people can come and see what we call the natural aging process. To many people, this old tree might be seen as just a load of old dead wood. But today we don't use the word dead wood, we call it decaying wood because we realise that decay is a very, very natural process in all trees when they reach a certain age in their life. And this one is a thousand years old. So we use words like biological continuity because looking at a tree like this, how did it become hollow? Why is it hollow? What made it what it is today? And we're beginning to understand what we now call the co-evolutionary relationship between the living tree, the insects, the bacteria, the nematodes, and all those myriad of other microorganisms which inhabit the non-living wood. And it's full of minerals and nutrients. And the fungi and all these other associated organisms have broken it down and all those minerals and nutrients go down to the base of the tree. They may have been stored for hundreds of years, but once they get down there, they are actually used by the tree again. And the lovely old tree literally recycles itself. But having said that, we've got all this old dead wood. But look here, it's alive thousand years old and it's still going strong look lovely beautiful the outer ring of the tree is just as living and alive as it was a thousand years ago and we're beginning to understand that now and we're beginning to understand about the mycorrhizal fungi the fungi that live in the soil which actually attach themselves to the tree roots and these fungi that live in the soil could well be thousands of years old because if this tree is a thousand years old, it's possible that there are only seven or eight generations of this tree back to the Ice Age. And that means the organisms that have been living in this tree and also the organisms that are living under the soil. So this tree not only is a reservoir of biodiversity for all its organisms, it's a reservoir of gene banks, of longevity. So we can study this tree. Let's hope it's here in 500 years time. It is essential that we try and keep these old trees going for as long as possible until science catches up. Because as I've said right at the beginning, science does not stand still. Hello Sweden, I'm Jill Butler and I'm Conservation Advisor for Ancient Trees at the Woodland Trust and I'm speaking to you today from Windsor Great Park and from beneath this magnificent ancient pollard oak. So where do ancient trees come from? They come from two sorts of origins, the historic medieval hunting forests of the kings of Europe but also the pollard trees which are a common heritage from Portugal in the east over to Turkey in the west and beyond from the Mediterranean and Greece in the south right the way up into northern Scandinavia. These trees are so important for our heritage. In the past, bits of this tree might have been used to repair the castle here in the Great Park. We so much admire you in Sweden for what you've done for your ancient trees already. 
Sweden's doing so much for its special trees. It's mapped so many of them and it has an action plan with lots of money behind it to actually do something constructive for those trees. And also the very best trees have been protected by the Natur Minna designation. The fact that Sweden does things like designate Natur Minna or natural monuments is so great for Ted and me because as we go round the country we can use these examples to show how Sweden is taking such great care of its ancient trees and it's a real example to the UK about what we should be doing. It's really marvellous when we travel around other countries in Europe to be able to use the Swedish examples of what you're doing for ancient trees to encourage other countries to do much more. A few years ago, I was invited to Sweden to the Oak Conference. During the Oak Conference, Nicholas Janssen asked me if I'd give an after dinner speech. In the after dinner speech, I said that it, I thought it showed the measure of a nation when they could hold the whole conference in English. For one Scots lady, who was in fact married to a Viking, one Dutchman and four Englishmen. I thought that was fantastic. But what was more fantastic, which in actual fact, it wasn't the language that had brought us together, it was the old trees. We were really there to talk about oak. And let's face it, oak was in fact, or is in fact, so much part of both their histories because it made the ships that took us around the world. Of course, you lot, you rode everywhere. We waited till we got a sail, but joking apart, Oak has been in our history since we started to sail. We owe you a great debt for what you are doing to push the old trees of Europe because both you and, our, and us in the UK have a great obligation to the rest of Europe to conserve our old trees. To everyone here in the conference today, we, both Ted and I, we wish you the very best of luck and hope you have a lovely conference. And thank you Sweden, good luck and remember, planet Earth needs you.